All right, how's it going, my comments? I'm here today with Travis Gibb, the creator of Broke Down Four Dead Bodies, uh, Coins yep. of Judas, Red yep. State Punk, yep. and so many more that I'm not going to list right now, but you can find. How you doing, Travis? I'm great. How are you, man? I'm doing good. What have you been doing in the last year since we've talked? Oh, I mean, it's it's been a wild year. Uh, we got nominated for Ringo for Cthulhu Invades uh, Wonderland, which was such an amazing opportunity for us to be nominated and to get to that point. You know, we had several books come out in the direct market. We had Granite State Punk and Coins of Judas both come out in the direct market. So they're not just Kickstarter books or in the direct market. Uh, we did the big thing called Hospice, where I got six creators all together making one book, which was wild. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, my wife did a comic book uh, to, called Sing Along Blog, Sing Along Comic, which was about cottage cheese and about my son. So lots of crazy stuff this year. It's been a wild year, and it's been so busy. In fact, I didn't even put out another issue of Voodoo Nations, which is completely done. It's been done probably since April. I just don't have the room to put it out. It's been so crazy. It's been wild. So do you just have to kickstart it? Yeah, I got to kickstart it. I'll do it at be probably at the beginning of the year because we've still got I still got two more kickstarters this year. Right now we're running Granite State Punk, the Coven, so the third uh, in that series, and then we got our annual Holiday Spirits, which is coming out uh, in December. So that's right. Um, so Granite State Punk, are you going to do each of them a one shot? Yeah, yeah, we're going to keep doing the one shot, uh, and that's done on intentional. It's done for a couple of reasons. One. When I started, I wanted it to be uh, just a one and done. That was my intention, but it, the fans loved it so much. The fans really resonated. I think it's my best book. Um, so that helped. But the other thing is, when you talk about the direct market, we talk about comic stores. Um, if you do one, two, three, four, five, it tends to have a drop off. Um, mm -hmm. You know, issue so issue one. You know, let's say it's at uh, two thousand people back, got it. The second one's half that. It, it'll drop down to one thousand. Third one will drop down to seven five. That drop off is a lot less if you do a series of one shots because they're all number ones. So uh, I'll probably continue to do it that way. It is telling one continuing story, but I always make sure that if you've never read another uh, Grand State Punk, that you could just buy one and you'll be caught up. Okay. Are you going to um, shop them around the publishers? Well, Grand State Punk is with Scott. Oh, yeah. Right. The other two, you got the Coven, right? Is Scout going to pick that up too? Yeah, they'll they'll do all the Grand State Punk ones. Yeah, so all the Grand Sweet. State Punk will be be with Scout. Uh, they sign a contract, so any Grand State Punk I do, uh, I mean they don't have to take it, but they have the right first right of refusal. So if I make a Grand State Punk, I have to offer it to them first. They've requested more. In fact, they want to make sure that I have a trade done by 2025. So they would like, ideally, they would like five to put in a trade. Um, yeah. You know, so that's that's our goal to get get to that trade. Um, I also have a spinoff called Granite State Goth that we're gonna we're gonna probably do a, a gothic spinoff. Okay, you're a busy man. I am a busy man. Uh, I'm loving it, loving it. Yeah, I mean it's great. This is the greatest time to be alive in comics, you know. Just so yeah, much great stuff. There's a lot of stuff. It's it's very busy, you know. Uh, when we first started talking, like right now on Kickstarter, there's 307 projects. Like when we started, it was like. 160 150 at this time of year like it's doubling so more and more people are creating comics more and more people are, are finding the opportunities through kickstarter and through small publishers to get their work out there which is really really great it's such a, a wonderful opportunity to kind of level up you know my goal i i really by 2025 knock on wood i want to i want to work with marvel i want to have a marvel project i i think it happened you got enough yeah. you got enough variety you know yeah, I think I should show them that I can write, right? You know, I've yeah. got enough stuff that I, I was like, I, I can write. Give me a, give me a chance, you know. I mean, and I've got a, you know, I got a lot of other publishing gigs that aren't Orange Cone. You know, in the next couple of years, you'll see a lot of non-Orange Cone projects come out because a lot of people are hiring me, and they're not hiring me for like a, a anthology where I do four pages. They're hiring me for full books and volumes and trades. You know, I'm working on a, uh, a superhero book right now uh, with uh, Zion Publishing. I, I don't know if Scout does them. I don't think they do. It's a uh, spider squirrel is a uh, name, Charlie McKevy. I don't know if you know him, uh, but he has a superhero book that I'm doing and I'm doing a full, a full graphic novel. So 150 pages for it, which is going to be badass. Nice. Um, yeah. So when you try to get a book to Marvel, do you submit it like everything else 
or is it? Yeah, it's not the way that works. So Marvel has to come find you. So there's a couple of ways of the, so you can't just send stuff to Marvel. You have to have someone who has like a, um, an in who says, hey, you can meet this editor, talk to that editor. Um, you know, so I've been, uh, you know, probably mid the year, I've been sending stuff to editors and having conversations. Hey, if you have a slot open, you know, because I'd love to, you know, I'll probably start out in like, you know, edge of Venom verse, right? You'll write one of those little Venom little things, which is yeah. fine. That that would be it for me. Like I'm good. <laughs> like that, that would that would be me making it. But uh, so you, you do that, uh, and then certain cons, like certain big cons, New York, San Diego, uh, like a Baltimore Heroes, they'll sometimes bring a representation for Marvel that you can submit your stuff to, um, which is more really for artists because they can see your work and kind of give you critique right there. But writers are allowed to go too. But really, I'm just like dropping off a bag, right? Here's my comic books. Like <laughs> read them. There's a business card in there if you want to hire me. Um, but I mean, that stuff works I, at Baltimore. Um, I got the opportunity to uh, pitch to Ahoy and pitch to uh, Vaults and pitch to well, there's one other one, one other one that is allowing me to pitch, which I would have never had the opportunity if not, because a lot of these uh, sites are blocked. You can't you can't just submit stuff. You know, the only movie you can really submit stuff to is like a scout or a source point or an image, uh, you know, where they're taking submissions at all time. Oh, yeah. Because could you imagine their inbox? It would probably be flooded all day every day right yeah yeah especially with kickstarters and all that yeah absolutely probably hire like a 20 people team just to go through that email right yeah no it's it's wild but you know uh it, it's a good thing it's a good opportunity they're doing some stuff but even though you know let's let's talk about image for a minute i love image i think it's one of the best companies in the world their deal is the best deal in indie comics but how many image titles do you see with a new name on it, right? It's mostly like people who work for Marvel and DC who want an independent book. It's not what it used to be. It's not, it's not your Kickstarter friends that you've been doing interviews with for the last five years, right? Yeah. It's, it's people who are already an image. James Tinian goes, I want an image book. Yeah, sure, you can have an image book. You know, Johnny Cates, yeah, you can have an image. Like, that's not the same. <laughs> um, but, you know, everybody's got to make money, so I get it. <laughs> So you've got your own show also, don't you? Level Up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a show called Level Up. Um, uh, it's been running a year. Just, it just uh, came to a year in November. Uh, yeah, and uh, what it is is I ask comic creators and I go through their career. I talk about all their books and how much I love them. And then I ask them for some advice on how to level up. You know, these are people who I aspire to be or like I want to see their path. I do it for a couple of reasons. One, selfish reasons. I want to learn how to level up myself. You know, I want to figure it out. So I do have people smarter than me. Two, I want to show that everybody's path is different. You know, some person have never written a comic and then they're working at Marvel tomorrow. Some people wrote 20 independents and Marvel will never come to their door. Like, I want to see what that looks like. So I, I interview everyone from pros to to uh you know kickstarter people i i have two rules to be on the show you have to have completed something meaning you have a trade out of all your work and somebody that's not you had to have hired you meaning someone you can't just i self-published all my stuff you you had to have someone else hire you for something because that's i think that's important for for someone's career is somebody else validating you and saying that yes. you know you i want you to, to work for me and, and do stuff Oh, yeah. Cause, I mean, I don't think anybody would say their their stuff's not good, you know? Right, sure. So, I mean, everybody, if you talk, everybody that has a book, they'll tell you it's the next greatest book. So, yeah, it's right. pretty good book, <laughs> you know? Um, where are you going to be at this year or next year? Uh, the only thing I've signed up for 100% is I'll be at MegaCon. Uh, so I'll be at MegaCon. Uh, that's in February this year, which is wild. I'm trying to get to Baltimore. I'm trying to do a Granite State Con again uh, in New Hampshire. I really like that con. I try to get up there every year. I'd like to do one of the big ones, uh, you know, um, you know, New York or or um, San Diego. But uh, that's it. But you, I mean, you'll see me in Florida. I'll do all the small, smaller, you know, two day shows that they have here too. So I'll, I'll be around doing some stuff. Are you planning on doing any signings with Scout? Uh, yeah, yeah. Next time I got to go to Comic Impressions to pick up some books, I'm going to set up a signing up that day. Um, 
just haven't figured out the last book we didn't uh, didn't I basically I have two two printers that I use. Um, I use comic impressions when I need like a lot, when I need like over 500, when I need like just like 50 or 100, I use another smaller printer um, where I can get stuff. So next time I use them, which is probably pretty soon because I've got to get some um, some reprints of the Cthulhu stuff, I'll come out and I'll come and do a signing over at Scout uh, headquarters for uh, Breaking Edge, which just came out uh, earlier, no, or in October, which is pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah, I was telling somebody else that when I first started, at comic impressions, some creators would get just one box. And now some people are getting full palettes and it's just amazing to see how people grow. Yeah. You know, like some of them, I'm not a fan of the books, but it's just cool to see how they came from one box now to a palette. That's kind of, well, even if you're not a fan of the book, someone clearly is right. If right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it may not, and it may not be your cup of tea, but it's somebody's cup of tea because they're That's, ordering them. <laughs> yeah, somebody's buying it, which is awesome to see how they grow so quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who's some of the new creators that we should look out for? Ooh, that is that is a tough. Um, right now, it's uh, we're in influx, right? Uh, so Kickstarters aren't performing as well as they used to. Um, so there's a lot of, um, uh, there, a lot of people are dropping off, you know, believe it or not. A lot of people have told us this year, this is their last year. They just can't hack it. They can't do stuff, which is, it's bound to happen. You know, I think that, that, that happens every, every three or four years, there'll be a rotation of people who are coming in. Um, new people who I like, hmm. I, uh, I like Karina Grant. She does uh, Worthy Chaos Redemption. Um, she does a really cool book over there. I think, um, though her book is um, it's her first comic book, and you can tell it's her first comic book. The woman's got dedication. I mean, she did seven books this year. Seven yeah. books. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I like uh, I like this guy. His name is. Uh, Wes Griff, he does Hard Justice. It's kind of fun. He's a good, uh, he's a good creator. Talked to a lot of people. I like, I like his vibe of what he's doing. Something. Um, uh, I don't particularly uh, love this guy's book, but I think Chris Moses is doing a lot of really unique stuff. His books are selling really well. Um, you know, so uh, and again, just like we said earlier, just because I don't like it does not mean that it's not good or somebody else's vibe. I mean, he's his his Kickstarters are going gangbuster over and over again, and he's growing and growing those platforms and building. So those are probably the three who I think are going to make some big impacts uh, in the next uh, little little turn of events in the next a month. And then some of our old say, I think some of our people are going to be leveling up this year. I know a lot of people behind the tables are talking about some stuff. I've got some stuff that I can't talk about yet, but there's some new publishers coming out into the field. And I think there's going to be some shakeup when that happens. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, and I also think uh, it's going to be the year of the Pepos. I think David Pepos is going to do some stuff. I think this Punisher, this new Punisher is really good. I know he's not new, but I, he's new to leveling up and going to that next phase. Do you think indie comic creators will ever come together and, and form the next image? Uh, I don't think we can. And let me tell you why. Um, it's everyone has so many different agendas and so many different ways of telling books. It's really, really hard to do that. I think image was one a once in a lifetime thing. Um, everyone just trying to get their stuff published and you don't need to anymore with Kickstarters and SourceFund. We don't need to all come together to get a discount on printing because really we just have to add an extra, you know, a couple hundred dollars on our Kickstarter to compensate for that. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, so I think that that's, that's kind of the big thing. The other thing is um, though there's all these new publishers coming out, they're all niche, right? They all have their niche of what they want, you know, uh, I think source point, you know, is kind of leaning more towards the game. So they want to buy properties that can help them make games. I think scout wants to make movies or anything that helps them lean towards movies is doing that. I think everyone has their kind of niche, like vault is horror, you know, boom is, as you know, pros who are doing kind of big sci-fi stuff. I think all the niches are kind of taken right now. So it makes it kind of hard. I think the only like, independent publisher that I think would do really well if someone really focused on kids books and that kid market and really get it. Cause there's, I mean, 
uh, what is it called? I can't even think of it. Captain Underpants and all those books are sell way better than any comic on the shelf. You know, so if we could find a market to get those in comic stores and, and figure out how to make that work. Uh, you know, I think that there's there's money to be made there, and I think that that's that's the secret is finding that out. But uh, I, you've read my books. I, I don't think I would be do do really well in the kids market. <laughs> I mean, the, the kids market just blows up even on YouTube. I think yeah. the kids part is the biggest part. Yeah, yeah I mean, my, my kid can't stop playing Roblox. Like that game is constantly on his phone, like playing. Uh, like my, it's my phone actually. I don't see my phone. Like from 11 till he goes to sleep every day because he's playing, you know, that game and having a good time, you know. And we, of course, have him do stuff. We went to see the Marvels today. You know, we took him out to do some cool stuff. But he's always there doing something. See, that's like Harley. She loves YouTube and she'll set – she's got like a little tablet. She'll set the tablet down and go do something. And it's just – playing through videos and just giving everybody watch time and all these views. And <laughs> sometimes we'd leave and come back and it's still playing. It's like, yeah. Well, that's, you gotta, you gotta get her on your, you gotta get her on yours. You da Daddy needs you, know, you to right? watch it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I didn't think of that. Um, dead or alive. Who would you like to make a book with? Um, I would have loved to make one with Tim sale. Okay. Um, you know, Tim Sale from, uh, you know, Long Halloween and stuff like that. I would have loved to make a book with him as an artist. Uh, a lot. That's my dead one. And, and, uh, and then Sean Gordon Murphy, you know, I love his punk rock style. Uh, you know, someone who does Granite State Punk, I'd love to get, you know, him on a book. I think that would be amazing. You know, I, I think those are, those are the two I'd like to work, you know, with. Okay. Um, do you, you want to say anything before we go? Uh, I guess if you're watching this, you know, um, you haven't had a chance, you know, back at Great Estate Punk, uh, The Coven, you know, it's a, it's a great book, you know, uh, people love Great Estate Punk, it's the people that, it's uh, most people's favorite book. Would you say it's your favorite or do you like Broke Down? I'll say Great Estate is probably okay. my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great Estate Punk, you know, mo like most people say it, uh, The Coven is the best one I've ever done. Uh, it's about uh, Zeke, he's still trying to figure out his powers. And uh, he gets himself uh, knocked out because he's, he's taken all these powers. And when he's knocked out, he remembers his past. And we, we see him as a kid. And he t we meet the coven, a coven of witches, a bunch of punk rock kids uh, fighting ghosts uh, in, a, in an old uh, burned out building. So it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, but it's, it's really written well. It's a lot of fun to read. Uh, I just love that book so much. Uh, you know, if I could only do that book, if I could just do that book monthly, I would. I, I, I would, and I think it would sell. I think it's uh, I think it's great. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come talk with me, Travis. I'm always here for you whenever you need me. What? You mean you haven't subscribed to Comic Chat Authority? Oh, come on. Subscribe already. What are you waiting for? It's no big deal. Like, man, don't forget to tell him to hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, that too. Just subscribe.